Hi and welcome. Everyone, it's Darius Barzande and I wanted to make this video for our UWealth community and also for anybody else in the world that's wondering about the current events going on and also how this relates to consciousness and awareness and how do we actually get from where we are now to where we want to go. And the theme of this video or the big underlying message is something I heard today from a really great video by Ralph Smart, which was speak your truth, speak your voice, even if your voice quivers. And I would love better lighting for this video, but this is the best that I could set up right now. And here we are, you know, kind of looking at the world. A lot of people have had questions like what's going on? How do we navigate through this? How does this relate to consciousness and spirituality? And how do we get from where we are to where we want to go? So I want to start out with just a very basic premise that the world and earth right now is moving through a transition. I think everybody knows that we are moving into and are in now a different age. And being in a different age, we have systems on the planet that right here you can see are not part of that higher age. They're vestiges of the past. So we have our military industrial complex. We have our money system. And many of you are aware of how, you know, Federal Reserve works or fractional reserve banking and how we actually print money in the US and we have certain banking structures that create inflation and actually diminish the value of our money. And our money is not backed by gold or any other tangible asset. It's just backed by a promise, an IOU. Uh, our governance structures, right? We have certain things in place in the world that maybe we don't completely agree with. Um, the people that are leaders on the planet, there are certain things, of course, that we don't agree with either. Our media and TV and how information is promulgated, propagated, uh, promoted to fit certain agendas. So all of this is moving through something I'll call the Great Awakening. And the Great Awakening has uh, a lot of different connotations for a lot of different people. But there is something happening and it is great. It's happening at all levels. So what does this mean, this Great Awakening? Well, it means that these structures right now are going through a change. We're going into essentially a funnel. And this funnel is moving us into 5D. It's moving us into a higher dimensional resonance, a more complete resonance. Now, as we move through this funnel, certain structures aren't going to fit. They're not going to make it. They're not in resonance with 5D. So they have to change. So what do we see when stuff has to kind of change and it's going through a higher vibrational field? Well, imagine you had a car that was only designed to go 30 miles an hour, right? A Model T dating back to 1900. And you decided, well, I'm gonna put a super fast engine on this and I'm gonna drive this thing 100 miles an hour. Everything would start shaking. Things that were held in place really well at 30 miles an hour, which it was designed to go, would be shaking so much they would probably fall off the car and you would have an accident, right? So. When we move into this higher dimensional resonance, these structures are going to start to shake. They're going to start to quiver. They're going to start to fall away. This is what we're actually seeing. So when we're seeing things come out, when we're seeing alternative truths come out, we're seeing people question this system. And people are saying, oh, why are so many people talking about this or talking about that? Why are these systems for example, like media, social media. Why is social media suppressing people? Why are they shadow banning people? Why are they blocking people? Why are they controlling content? Why don't they want people talking about certain things? Because they know that these structures were designed to work in a certain vibrational paradigm. And that vibrational paradigm is not 5D. 5D is open, it's open awareness. And this is where I wanna walk over to here. So we're gonna focus on this a little bit. Because if you understand this, you'll understand why a lot of this is happening. So if we look at this word here, vibration, right? Everything has a certain vibration. The first level of vibration, and this is not related to the Hawking scale, it's just very general, is fear, right? So if we're in a fear vibration, a lot of these things work really well. If we're fearful, you know, we want 
the military to do certain things. We want to see certain things happen in our world because we want to be safe. We can tolerate certain things because we want to be safe. Uh, if we're in fear, we can tolerate certain things with how our system works because we feel that we need that security. So we're willing to take a high interest loan. We're willing to see our money diminish in value and, and be okay with that because, well, at least we've got a certain amount of money or at least the government is providing for us. So all of these things operate very well when we are kept in fear. So the agenda, as it relates to a lot of things going on on the planet right now, is one between fear and awakening. So if you watch any sort of news, you can see there's a lot of that agenda of, of promoting fear, promoting uncertainty, keeping something in the human psyche that is like a critical event that keeps you uncertain about your future. That's why there's always some sort of breaking news. There's always some sort of event. There's always something happening that occupies our, our mind. The news never, you know, will come on and say, hey, everything is going good. There have been these great developments in our world, and I think we're going to do good. So you know what? Don't worry about us this weekend. Just enjoy yourself. No, the news wants to keep you in that state. So how do we navigate out of this? Because what I am getting from a lot of people with the COVID-19 situation and everything else, a lot of people writing to me and saying, look what these governors are doing. Look what's happening at the state level. Look, what, look what's happening here in my state. What do I do? How do I navigate out of this? How do I get myself uh, to a place where we are moving into freedom and what do we do? Well, I think there's four steps and the four steps are we first have to move out of fear. If we're in a state of fear, we're not going to be able to fully be conscious to make the powerful informed choices. We're also not going to be able to look at reality from a standpoint of full awareness. We're going to really be just blocked in, just trying to worry about our safety. We're going to be at that root level of chakra. And this ascension and moving up into 5D is, is very much something that's also happening within us. So what's happening outside of us and how we relate to the world is also happening within us. So we want to get out of fear. Now, the way to get out of fear is to actually build in an awareness, build in an awareness of what is going on and be in awareness of it. So one of the things that I tell people with things happening on the planet is you do not necessarily need to be in fear to be aware of something bad happening on the planet. So for example, uh, when I was an attorney, I would many times have to go after somebody that was involved in financial fraud or they didn't pay something and they fraudulently were trying to get out of something that they were legally obligated to pay. Now, I didn't become a fraudulent person because I was focusing and had the awareness of what was happening. Because I had an awareness that somebody was doing something wrong, because I had to focus on what was happening and how that case was being put together and I had to understand what was going on, that didn't make me a person who was going to commit financial crimes. Really what it made me was aware so then I could choose what action I was gonna take. So when we are consciously unaware and we haven't made a choice and we don't have any awareness, we end up being in fear. And there's just this lingering fear that something's not right, something's not happening, something isn't gonna be good because we've got no deep awareness. So one of the things that we're gonna move through in this time is fear, and then we need to move into awareness. So the way that we move out of fear is we need to ground in to our bodies, ground into our hearts, and take in information on all sides. Take it in. We don't need to reject everything, because most of the time when we reject something or we're rejecting some idea, it's because we're terrified. We don't want to know anymore. We don't want to see anymore. And that, however, keeps us locked into fear. By opening up to an awareness of what's happening, by opening up to an awareness of where we are, we can then begin to empower ourselves. Now, we don't need to stay there. We become aware. And maybe there's things we don't like. I mean, maybe there's stuff at this level that we don't like. We don't want to dive into it too deep. We don't want to know about all the bad things happening. But we're aware that something's not right. That's enough. 
that's as far as you need to go. You don't need to become an expert on everything that's wrong in the world. Just be aware that something's not right. You don't want to stay there. Then we got to make a choice, right? We have to make a choice. So this is done consciously. So if you're seeing things in your state, if you're seeing things around the world you don't agree with, you want to be aware of that because that could affect your life. Uh, you're not going to be able to transmute that necessarily just by being completely unaware of it and assuming everything is fine. You need to be aware, right? And as you're aware, you need to make a choice, right? So if we're in a boat going over a waterfall or we're getting close to the edge of a waterfall and we don't do anything about it, we say, I'm not going to pay attention that we're going over that waterfall. I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not going to pay attention. There are very few people on earth, if any, that could literally move that boat to the shore with telepathy, right? Very few. I certainly can't do it. I've got to be aware. I've got to be aware. I may be scared, but I'm going to be aware. But I'm going to make a choice. I'm going to make a choice that I'm going to row the boat to shore. This is where we're at on our planet right now. Light workers, people who are not happy with things going on, we've got to be aware and we've got to make a choice. We are being called to activate this ascension in the 3D. And I'm gonna share how you can do that in small ways, big ways, in powerful ways. So we are aware, we make a choice. We say, I do not want this reality. I don't wanna live like this. I don't consent to this. And we revoke our consent. We say, in choice, because I am aware of the things happening on the planet, I am not in fear, I am out of fear, I am choosing. So if you hear this and you do not like certain things going on or you want to be in a place of sovereignty, which is what we're talking about, versus slavery, which is the place of fear, and sovereignty, the place of love and action, we simply need to say, I revoke consent for any agenda, for any manipulation, for any control that does not allow me to live my highest divine sovereignty. I revoke consent, express or implied, in any time, space, dimension, timeline, or grid that is limiting the sovereignty of my soul as a free and complete being. By saying that, by hearing that, by putting your hand on your heart, as I say that, you are now uncording yourself from these systems. It does not mean that these systems are, are not part of your reality. They are in essence your reality because we are in 3D, but we are not feeding them with our fear. You see, if you say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to know anything about anything, but I haven't revoked consent. You still have unconscious programs, connections. You still have not affirmatively declared that you are revoking consent to that. And these systems run on our implied consent. They run on our consent. So we want to basically revoke consent, revoke and cut the cords to them. And then we want to take action in love. So when I say taking action in love, this is where I say we've got to, from a state of awareness, from a state of love, take action, speak out. If there's something going on that you don't like, that you don't agree with, speak about it, share about it. Tell your friends about it. Uh, you know, say, you know, I don't want to tolerate this. This is not what I want to see happen on the planet. This is not where I want to see things go. This is not how I want my life to be. So we have to speak. We have to take action. We have to share. We may have to organize. People may have to get out and speak their truth, share what's going on. Uh, use your constitutional rights or the rights that are allowed to you in your country and act in love. Going out and protesting or standing in solidarity for something you don't want doesn't need to be an act of anger. It doesn't need to be an act of rage or violence. It can be an act of standing in love and letting all of those people that are in power in the 5D know that we will not, that in the 3D, that we will not tolerate what is being done. And what are we seeing? So the question might be, okay, well, what's really going on? What we're seeing right now is, I believe, tension between two world paradigms, right, for humanity. One of them is sovereignty, right? And sovereignty is service to others. 
We've talked about this. Uh, Dolores Cannon talked about this. Law of One kind of talks about this, that as we move into 5D, we're going to be moving into a time where it's service to others, right? And so there are beings on the planet right now that are service to others. And you just have to be 51% service to others, meaning that you're caring about how others are. You're caring about service to humanity, service to uh, benefit the world, to benefit all the kingdoms. So if you're not acting in service to others, you're acting in service to self, right? A very high level of service to self. And you're seeing different actors in government right now taking at some level a certain amount of service to others, right? If there is danger with the virus, we want to be careful. We don't want people to get sick. We don't want people to have, you know, a big spread. But, and that is service to others. So some of the original things done, that's perfect. But where we want to watch as human beings is, where does this scale begin to shift from service to others, meaning, okay, our government is trying to protect us to service to self, right? So where do or when do these leaders begin to shift to say, well, I've got this agenda. I'm getting more power. I'm getting more control from what's going on. So I'm going to go into this service to self and that being my political party, that being my own uh, funding and I'm getting more money from the federal government because I am labeling cases as COVID-19 that aren't, there's all sorts of things and I'm not an expert in everything that's been going on. I'm not going to uh, be that person. There are a lot of great resources of people who are digging into some of the things that appear a little strange that we should all be aware of. But when these powers that were here in, in 3D start to move into slavery and service to self, we get into a model of global control. And that's what this is. Global control is not going to be much about sovereignty and it's not going to be as free as local control or regional control or countrywide control and governance. So this is where we see people who are pushing like a big global structure, like that sounds great if we are here in 5D because then we'll have the tools and the awareness to take into account service to others and our own natural sovereignty because we'll all be coming from a higher place. But in 3D, global control means that you've got a few people at a table controlling the world and you have to really hope that those people stay at a super high vibration and they are super enlightened beings because they literally would have the fate of the planet and every living being in their hands. And if they move into this state of service to self, this is not good. This becomes a prison, right? So this is where we're at. There's this very delicate balance right now. And we do know the timelines go to light. We do know that we do awaken, but we've got to really be vigilant. So I say again, you may move into fear knowing what's going on, become aware of the different things that are happening, take all the information in. The Great Awakening is here for us to activate our own ascension, take this information in and begin to learn and understand where things are looking like we're going from service to others into service to self. Who are the people that are doing that? Where is that line? And what do you do about it? You revoke consent. You do not feed those structures with your consciousness anymore. You use a revocation statement, and I will include one down below if you're seeing this video on YouTube. And then we start to act in love. And that can be as simple as sharing information, talking with friends and family, listening to conscious shows, plugging into alternative media, liking certain types of videos, going to platforms that are not censored like Mayway or BitChute uh, because YouTube is heavily censored. Facebook is of course heavily censoring. Twitter is heavily censoring anything other than the mainstream narrative because the only way that we can stay in this 3D grid is by staying in fear and having a lack of awareness. This is why if we stay here, 
we don't have awareness, we don't have uh, any sort of understanding and we're in fear, we're gonna stay locked into this paradigm. But the good news is that the vibrations hitting the earth are accelerating so much that it's getting harder and harder for these powers that were to actually do this. And they know that and that's why we're seeing things that they're holding on to, right? They're holding on to the fear, they're holding on to the pandemic, they're holding on to these control mechanisms and levers because they've seen now that it works. So we've gotta be in awareness, we've gotta choose, revoke that energy, do it verbally, do it express, like speak it out loud, and then now act in love. You do not need to be in anger, you do not need to be in fear. You act in love and you take action. Organize, share information, hold good space, share people speaking and sharing truth, and choose the reality you wanna live in. And as that happens, these structures are not gonna be able to function in that higher state. They rely on a lack of awareness and they rely on fear, which is why you can see their actions. So I wanna thank everybody. This is kind of the state of what's going on and this is you know, for people that have had questions and y'all are sending me a lot of videos about different things, I am very aware of it. And these are the steps I recommend, the four steps to move forward. Thanks everyone. If you have any questions, post them down below. Much love.